Welcome to Vidhi Tun in Hapnafjord. It's bright, it's sunny, it's not that cold, and the Iceland team is batting first. Leslie Takunha and Derek Dionarain walked out, but Takunha soon walked back as Matthew Gill found swing. Brendan Fernando followed LBW on the front foot shortly afterwards, six for two. Then Kyle Linzel bowled with real pace, hitting Dionarain on the glove and making Prabhat Wirasuriya jump around. Linzel beat the bat often, but Dionarain clung on and waited for the change bowling. It duly arrived in the form of Paul Miller, and Dionarain helped himself to a couple of fours as Miller dropped a bit short. By a bit, I mean very. The diminutive Dionarain then hit Tom Allen back over his head and through the covers. Then Miller dismissed Weera Surya before Mohamed Yunus, who'd only just arrived at the crease, tried an instantly regrettable heave and was LBW to Allen. 31 for 4. In came Sammy Gill in his 20th season for Iceland. He top-edged a sweep to Clancy, who fell over, but the reprieve was short-lived as Gill tried to hit Miller for 6, only to find Linzel at deep mid-wicket. Avi Chauhan's first plan was to try and switch-hit Miller. Poetry in motion. Then he hit a shot off Allen straight out of the hockey coaching manual. Simon Lambert was brought on and Chauhan connected with an extravagant pull. Not surprisingly, he attempted to repeat the shot off the very next ball and was caught by Linzel. 45 for 6. Dionorain, meanwhile, had been accumulating steadily, but now he went up a gear and drove Chris Warne for consecutive fours. Crucially, this gave Keenan Botha time to play himself in. After his customary two dot balls, he felt he'd seen enough and smashed two sixes and a four in one over from Lambert. Playing to his strength, hitting length balls over Cow Corner and into the campsite, yet it didn't occur to the English visitors to post a deep mid-wicket. Or maybe even three of them. Farming the strike, Botha now hit Warn for six, then hit his fourth maximum over the head of the fielder, now posted at stable door, and into the campsite again. Dionorain, mixing deft touches with fierce driving, brought up his 14th half century for Iceland from 51 balls. Botha signed off the innings with a flourish, having put on 60 with Dionorain. Gill and Linzel were the pick of the bowlers, and Iceland had made a more or less competitive total. Iceland knew they'd have to bowl their socks off, but Abdur Rayman, not yet an international cricketer, opened up to Chris Cole too short and too wide, and the English batsman unfurled some rasping square cuts for four. But then Rayman began to bowl fuller and straighter, and beat the bat of first Cole, and then Chris Warne. But there was loose bowling from the other end, as Cole scored freely off the left arm at Chauhan. With the score 28 without loss and both openers going nicely, Cole set off for a single, but a neat slide, stop and throw from Chauhan via Dionorain saw Warren stranded mid-pitch, sent back by Cole. In came James Truscott and he too found width on offer and the visitors were a third of the way to their target after just six overs. Spin changed everything. First both the beat Cole and had him neatly stumped by Fernando, and then Weera Surya had an LBW shout against Truscott, the impact just outside leg. But next ball, Truscott nicked the leg break behind. Tim Clancy was then close to being LBW too, but the ball hit him outside the line of off stump. Weera Surya appealed for leg before against Dave Langford, but again, the impact was not quite straight enough. A big moment followed when Fernando thought he had Clancy stumped, but the appeal was turned down at square leg the slow motion replay suggesting that Clancy had been lucky. Botha then beat Langford through the gate and the touring team had lost 4 for 14, still needing 64 from 8 overs. No ball! In came Simon Lambert at number 6. Botha and the entire Iceland team went up for a huge appeal against him, but the umpire felt that the impact was just outside the line of the off stump. There may even have been a little inside edge too. Lambert went into attack mode, hitting hard and straight to the boundary, 
and steadily the match swung again towards the visitors as the inexperienced youngster Satya Rupan was brought on to bowl his leg breaks. Well, it was a critical over as Lambert, showing him no mercy, smacked him for 24 runs off six balls. Mind you, not everything went Lambert's way. That was some consolation to the bowler. The returning Chauhan took a body blow of Clancy, but the runs kept coming and 13 runs were required off the last over, bowled by Eunice. The first ball was a dot and the second was a wicket as Lambert went for 48. Now it was 13 off 4 and Scott Brown edged his first ball for 4, bringing it down to 9 from 3. But then he nicked behind, 9 from 2. And Matt Gill scrambled a 3, leaving Clancy needing 6 from the last ball. And would you believe it? He did it! much to the disbelief and dismay of the bowler units. The English visiting team won. And what's more, it was the first last ball finish ever to take place in an Iceland game. A thrilling last over and a superb run chase from the tourists with Lambert top scoring with 48 out of 51 for the fifth wicket. That's 2020 cricket here at the world's northernmost cricket ground in Iceland.